What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to 2007. Today I'm going to go over my top eight favorite albums from that year. What was happening in 2007? Well, the Indianapolis Colts won the Super Bowl. The Boston Red Sox won the World Series. San Antonio Spurs won the NBA Finals. And the Anaheim Ducks with Scott and Rob Niedermeyer won the Stanley Cup. That was awesome. I was so happy when that happened. The Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End were was the tops of the box office. And the iPhone debuted in 2007. That would be 17 years ago? 17, yeah, that's, uh, that's a while. Uh, 2007 actually was a strong year. I was surprised. Another surprise. So maybe, maybe I'll, I'll have a decent amount. Um, it's it's good. I mean, it, it, the the years are strong. I I don't know. It's like all those other bands. That obviously, we knew we grew up as a kids. Like whatever, Kiss, Rush. Not that Rush wasn't making albums, but nothing that I was enjoying. Prince is on the list, but you know, not as much as I was enjoying his stuff through the eighties and you know. Uh, Van Halen, like a lot of these bands that you grew up and uh, loved when you're younger, they just aren't around. So you got to find new stuff or <sighs> just listen to keep listening to the old stuff. So it's it can be it can be frustrating at times, but uh, like last year, I I spent a good almost a month, just shy of a month, maybe just doing the Steely Dan catalog, and I. I have so many really good memories. And when I hear those songs, if I hear them pop up on the radio, I, mean, I really enjoy it. So um, once I'm sort of done all these albums, I'm going to go back with um, uh, Randy uh, and we'll, we'll do a deep dive with Pink Floyd. And I'm kind of looking forward to that rather than just new stuff. I wouldn't mind just doing the same thing I did with Steely Dan. So it's landed me some good memories and some new f songs I really like. So I thought that would be good. <laughs> Anyway, so let's get going here. I got two honorable mentions. Let's get started. So up first, we have Prince and Planet Earth and Planet X with Quantum. How's that for ironic? Planet X and Planet Earth. Um, the Prince was, it's its not a bad album. I didn't, I, I gave this a, a listen through a couple times. It has that song I really love, The One You Want to See. Oh, I love that. It's one of my favorite post, uh, post Chaos and Disorder uh, songs really 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 enjoy that one uh so yeah let's get started with my top eight coming in at number eight the quintessential prog band in my opinion this is the flower kings and the sum of no evil this is a two cd set and really if i was gonna describe to somebody this is how i would do it maybe somebody else would say you know maybe some Marillion or something like that but like when i listen to flower kings it's like it's just heavy enough it's just you know uh jazzy enough but it's not too jazzy and it's not too heavy and it's not too quirky it's like it's a good blend of kind of a lot of a lot of um genres and it's just it, it's its own thing it's prog so the flower kings to me are like if i was to describe prog It'd be the Flower Kings. You know, Spock's Beard's close, but it's a little heavier than the Flower Kings. You know, they've got like a lot of percussion and then a kind of sound effects sort of sounds like the whoosh, like with a whistle and that. It's a little different, but it's it's that quirkiness adds to the charm. So this has the drummer again from Adam and Eve, Zoltan Soares. And again, his drums sound great and his playing is great. Same with the bass player. So that's the Flower Kings coming in at number eight with... The Sum of No Evil. At number seven, we have a female artist. This is Katie Tunstall and Drastic Fantastic. Uh, she had like two big songs in this album. And then I forget the other one, but the one I, I really like is called uh, <laughs> If Only. If Only, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's If Only. If not, I'll put it below with my correction. But really... Um, I was listening to it again. It kind of reminds me of my number two choice. It, the, the recording, it's it's recorded quite hot. It's it's pretty present. There's a lot of a lot of pre, a lot of compression going on. It's very loud. It's good though. She's she's a good singer. Good song. Had some really nice songs. I I think I got this from 
I think one of my clients got me this when I was personal training back at the Core Essentials in Nanaimo. Anyways, it's still a good album, man. There's just still some great songs, and Katie Tunstall, Katie Tunstall has, still has a great voice. So that is Katie Tunstall. Katie Tunstall, Drastic Fantastic, at number seven. At number six, we've got an old dude. This is Paul McCartney, and memory almost full. Um, Dance Tonight, and then... That song... Times for... Jesus, I can't. I'm horrible with uh, with names of songs when I'm sort of on the spot because when I'm talking, it's just kind of flowing, and then you go back to memory, and it's like your brain's kind of going, "Where is that?" Anyways, um, this album's really good. This has got some really nice songs. I'm glad I gave this another listen. I ha- I had that, that track number two. Um, is this? Yeah, memory also is, is the name of the album. Um, it, it it has a really different feel and a different sound, and then I I I seek did I seek it out, and then I found and then I grabbed the album, I just gave it a listen through, and I'm like the dance tonight, and that has a cute little video. I think Nat- Natalie Portman's in that one, and then there's another song in this album that I really like, and so who knows, maybe a deep dive to Paul McCartney's in uh, in in order. I know um, Paul Bertolino from the world famous As It Should Be Studios had mentioned, he had mentioned Paul McCartney in around 95, 6, 7, somewhere around there. He had done an album. And preceding that, he had gone back and he was listening to a lot of the Beatles albums. And so he was, I don't know if he was remastering or doing something. So he had that sort of in his mind when he was approaching this new album. And then Paul said that it was one of his best solo albums. So all will. I'll probably give McCartney a... He's definitely is worth it. He, he I like his music, so... Anyways, that's Paul McCartney, number six, with Memory Almost Full. Coming in at number five, we have got, I think, the second and only two albums from this band, and I forgot to add them on my other list. I'm very annoyed. This is Velvet Revolver and Libertad. Um, These guys sonically always sounded excellent. You've got... Uh, uh, Paul Whelan's uh, Whelan's dude from Stone Temple Pilots that passed away. Unfortunately, he had substance issues for decades. That poor guy, Paul Whelan's Paul, ah, that's stupid. Um, Slash on guitar, Duff on bass, who I really like his stuff, and Matt Sorum on drums. Basically, Guns N' Roses with a different singer. But these guys had a, a tight sound. This album isn't as strong as the the I think their debut album. I can't believe I forgot that. Ah, that pisses me off. Um, but this is a good album, but it's not a great album. Like, but for 2007 and the type of music I like, it makes it at to number five on the list. So that's Velvet Revolver and Libertad at number five. Coming in at number four, a bit of a curveball here. This is Mika and Life in Cartoon Motion. Mika Mika. Do, 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 do. This guy is very kind of showy. Like, it, it sounds like it could be like a soundtrack or from a musical. Very thematic. Very big. It, it, it's it's a grand. It's a grand gesture of, a, of an album. It's quite good. I remember I listened to this a lot back in 2007 when this came out. I really enjoyed it. I, I think I listened to it almost a little too much because I want to listen to it again. I was like, yeah, it's good. But if it was where it was before, it'd probably be like number one or two. So it's at number four. So it's obviously still pretty good. So um, Grace Kelly is like the big smash runaway hit from that, that album. And I still, it's still great, man. It's such a great written song. That is Mika and Life in Cartoon Motion at number four. Coming in at number five, we have the babe from Barbados. This is Rihanna and Good Girl Gone Bad. Um, Please don't stop the music. Shut Up and Drive, Umbrella. And there's one other song I forget the name of, but I had this on. And I forgot how good it was. I, like when it... I think in this sort of era, you've got a lot of female artists. Not that there always wasn't female artists, but you've got uh, Taylor Swift was about to come out. Sia, who I really liked. Rihanna. 
I don't mind Ariana Grande. I don't mind Selena. I know this is a little bit before their time. But Rihanna, and she is one of the top selling, top three, I think, selling female artists of all time. Her and Swifty. I think she's number two. She's got good music, man. Even though she's a girl and as a dude, you're not supposed to be listening to girl music. But she's got really good music. Like, it's like I... I got separated around 2009, right at the beginning of 2009. And then so I just, you know, you kind of try new things and like, oh, I'll try out this dance music. And then hearing my cousins DJing in 2010, um, I'd never heard like DJ music before, like proper DJ music when they're lining shit up, not just putting song after song after song. And I kind of was like, oh, this is, I could get into this. And then, you know, not too long after that, I got into Dead Mouse and, it's, I had never, I'd never liked keyboards before. So with the, with the female music, I mean, with the Rihanna and, and that, she's got good tunes, man. Like there's, I can't argue it. She's got good tunes. Like Nuno Bettencourt played guitar for her for several years. So she's got great tunes and I like her vibe and yeah, she's good looking, man. So anyways, it's a good album, man. Really good album. And the next one's another good album. So that's Rihanna at number three with good girl gone bad coming in at number two we have the click five and modern minds and pastimes um i think these guys were in my list for 2005 but this album i threw on headlight disco baby headlight disco this album is awesome if you like i call this power pop this is this is power pop this is these guys are good man I will be listening to this again. I forgot how good it was. I mean, this could have been number one, but when you hear my number one, you'll sort of understand. But if you like Power Pop, check out The Click Five. And their second album is called Modern Minds and Pastimes. It is excellent. There's really good poppy songs. mixed. They're mixed a little hot. That's what I was mentioning earlier. They're a little bit hot in your face. But they're good. They're great. This is, this is worth the checkout. So go check out The Click Five and... Modern Minds and Pastimes coming in at number two. And coming in at number one, my most favorite album from the year 2007 is Porcupine Tree, Fear of a Blank Planet. This one starts with a sort of a keyboard typing. Gavin Harrison really, when he joined the band in, in absentia, and then I think they've had... Uh, dead wing i believe and then this one i think there's maybe one other one but he adds such he's a very he's obviously an awesome drummer but he is a musical drummer he's busy but not so busy like really excellent and then obviously steven uh steven wilson and the rest of the group this is I think this is one of their last albums i believe and it's it's great i really love this album um, yeah, I can just throw this on and just listen to it start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. Nothing really stands out, just the entire album I enjoy. I know that sounds boring, but it is what it is, so. Anyways, that's my list for 2007, so I will also do a things I like, so stay tuned for that, hopefully not long after this, so. Until then, I will catch you guys later for things I like or 2008, so until then, I'll catch you later. Peace.